All right, so today I'm gonna to make a spot welder. Um, as is usual in most of my projects, um, I wanna to put together a battery pack for uh, another video that I'll be doing, but um, I wanna do a spot weld for these rather than solder. Uh, lithium ion batteries uh, take a beating if uh, you put too much heat on them and sometimes you can destroy them. Let me show you what we'll be using. One of the things is a starter relay and I picked this one up at a relatively decent price. Got a control module which will allow me to set the uh, amount of time that current will flow. Uh, got some lugs and shrink wrap and I've got some 8 gauge um, primary wire it's silicone and the reason I uh, chose to use this is that it's very flexible so that when we make a welding pen it'll uh, be easy to use uh, once we have it tied off to the battery. I want to go ahead and mount the solenoid. The uh, solenoid is uh, designed to carry a high level of uh, amperage. Um, it's basically a car starter solenoid. Uh, we'll probably get three, four hundred amps through here when we're welding and um, what we'll do is we'll use a control circuit to close the solenoid via these two contacts and uh, these big giant lugs here are going to be the uh, what carries the uh, voltage and the, uh, and the amperage to do the spot welding. Uh, I am going to mount it though. I've got the um, basically just two pieces of wood. I'm mounting it to this. I'm going to be mounting the uh, control board and uh, we'll go through that later. I'll show you how to set this up um, so that it basically gives me one tenth of a second. That's the lowest uh, amount of uh, time that we can program into that. Anyway, to mount this, I'll be basically drilling two holes here and using the standoffs and the screws, I'll, I'll have this uh, screwed in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. So what I'm doing here is adding some lugs to the uh, cables, the uh, silicone 8 gauge cables that I uh, showed you earlier. Um, also adding battery clamps. Uh, that way I can um, um, just connect it to a battery when I need it, remove it, and you know I don't have to go through a big fuss of uh, bolting it on or off. The nice thing about the uh, shrink, wrap, shrink wrap that's included in here is it has a glue on the inside, so as it melts, it'll actually deposit a glue. In. Should you happen to have a weak crimp, it'll pretty much hold everything together. Looks great. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is get electricity, or get wiring, um, control circuit wiring. I'm going to do a push button. Uh, so we get a momentary click and we'll get some electricity through the uh, solenoid. Um, I'll get power to that little control board. I'll show you how I program it. I'm also going to put a link um, in the description. Uh, there's a gentleman that sells these things. Um, I bought mine on Amazon, sorry, but I, you know, we'll help you with your channel. And he actually goes through a very detailed explanation of how they work. Because uh, if you read the instructions, which have been translated from probably Chinese, um, they don't make any damn sense at all. So let me go ahead and get that done and I'll show you how I program it for what I want it to do, which is just basically just turn the solenoid on for a brief period of time. I'm going to start out with 100 milliseconds and we'll go up from there if we need to. So what I'm doing here is creating a trigger for the uh, spot welder. I'm using a momentary switch. I've got some bell wire, um, fine gauge, uh, finer gauge if you will, soldering it onto the switch. Uh, once I'm done, I'll be inserting that into a small piece of PVC pipe. When I do insert it into the pipe, I want to make sure that the uh, edge of the switch sits on the edge of the pipe so it doesn't go anywhere. And uh, you'll see what I mean by that momentarily. To complete this, I'll be sliding the whole assembly into a piece of shrink wrap, uh, making sure that the shrink wrap overlaps the switch and holds it in place. And you'll see me doing that in about a second here. Get it shrunk, and um, you can see that the shrink wrap is actually holding the switch in place, and uh, the switch will be done. So I've got a uh, timing board with a relay, and what this will do is allow me to um, go ahead and set how much time this relay is closed. And this is going to control the uh, solenoid, so we'll get a couple of hundred or more amps of current flowing through the uh, pen I made, um, and it'll be controlled by this board. 
So this board actually has circuitry in the back. I'm going to pop these little standoffs that came with it, which is smart because uh, if we try to screw this down, uh, we could crush some of the electronics. And then I'm going to hot glue this to the uh, to the wood, and uh, that will give me enough to um, enough space to take care of the electronics, and at the same time mount this to the uh, to the uh, spot welder. So what we've got is um, this little circuit board. Of course, we've got these. Uh, instructions that are written in English sort of not really they're pretty terrible but um what we do have is we have enough schematic drawings to understand that this is the positive input and um, this is the negative power input so this is going to be the power source and right now I'm just wiring this up temporarily to program it. And here's the trigger I made, if you remember this. Uh, positive is going to go up here. And it's going to go into the same terminal as the positive source. That way we can feed a high level trigger to the, uh, to the unit. In case you're wondering why I have a black wire going to the positive terminal, it's because the wire coming from the trigger is encapsulated. There's only two wires, a red and a black. So really what they're doing is feeding power from the black wire through the switch up to the terminal on the top, which closes the circuit and uh, fires off the relay. All right, now I'm going to hook this up to the battery and we should get power. And these wires will be rerouted later to um, to a more permanent installation. Right now I just want to get power onto the uh, unit. There we go. It's actually in uh, mode P1 which is the mode we want. Uh, what P1 does is it will uh, close the relay for a predetermined amount of time and what we want to do is actually tell it how long. Alright so that's the timing mode. OP is open or uh, actually relay closed. Go up Set this so the decimal point is moved over one. Hit set. Make sure time out. All right. So P1. I'm going to hit the trigger here, and literally it just flashed for one one hundredth of a second. So the next step is going to be. Um, I need to route power to the normally open side of this and then um, route it to the uh, solenoid so that we can control the solenoid with this. Let me go ahead and get that wired real quick and we'll pick this up in a minute and I'll show you how this works. Here's a schematic of how I have everything wired up. Now it's not a wiring diagram, it is an electrical schematic so it represents the electrical connections that make the spot welder work. I'll include the link in the description so if you want you can download a copy of this schematic. So here's a shot of the finished unit. Um, there's a lot going on here. Uh, basically got the uh, the actual welding pen. Um, the uh, positive side is tied to the relay. The other side of the relay is tied to the battery via clamp. This is not part of the relay. What I've done here is basically just put a bolt through and um, tied it to a clamp. And that way I have both of these kind of facing in the same direction. That way when I want to uh, connect it to a battery, I've got the two clamps here. I've got the welding pen that I made here tied on one end to the, uh, to the uh, solenoid. Uh, the other side uh, of the solenoid, of course, goes to the battery. When the solenoid closes, you get some current flowing through there. Here's the control board. 
a um, bunch of wiring. I'll show you how that's basically wired up uh, in a uh, schematic that I'll include here. And of course the uh, the trick. So let's go ahead and uh, do a quick test with this. I've got some old lithium ion batteries. Um, I'm going to just do a couple of test spot welds on this and just see how this does. And hopefully it'll do well. But let's uh, give it a shot and see. So let's connect the negative to the battery and the positive. And we should get power. So we do have power on here. I'm just going to fold back one of these leads. And um, let's give this a shot. Pressure on it. Try to hold it so you can see it. Here's the trigger. A um, little hot, but it definitely welded. Um, that's one of the things. I think this battery is. Uh, it's got 800 cold crank in it, so it might be a little much. But uh, I've got stuff one tenth of a second, or you know, basically a uh, hundred milliseconds. So I'm going to give this a shot. I set it for 0 0.07. 0 0.07 should be 70 one hundredths of a second. There we go. Nice, nice. Do the other side. Just a little bit of spark. Yeah, this is perfect. That is the perfect amperage to use. Well, it's not amperage, it's the amount of time that we're sending current through this battery. So that works really well. Do one more. Get this battery. It's got a tab that's hanging loose. Let's just bend that tab over and um, give it a shot of juice. Man, I'm getting some really nice welds on this. So I got it set for 0 0.07. That's giving me some really good welds. That's basically um, 7 milliseconds, um, point, point zero 0.07, um, the amount of time that the uh, circuit's closed is uh, 7 milliseconds, and that's all we need. If it was a larger, or excuse me, if it was a smaller battery, we would probably up the amount of time. But this is a great thing about this one particular timer is that you can go from uh, milliseconds, point, you know, point 0.1, for example, would be 100 milliseconds, to point zero 0.0, one which would be one millisecond and it's probably not enough i got it at seven milliseconds and uh, that really is actually doing the job really well so anyway uh thanks for watching if you like this video hit like share and don't forget to subscribe once again thanks for watching